Okay, Brad. Okay, Brad. Tyler Bertuzzi is a leaf. Let's talk about it, but real quick. Think you know which way it's gonna go? Head on over to Sports Interaction. There's no more NHL games and you can't bet on the draft anymore, but I did see the Australian Ice Hockey League on there. And $2 Steve won 17 bucks off Adam Fantilli going third overall. But they still got baseball and all other major sports. Want to bet? Then make your next bet at sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn and download the Sports Interaction app, but only if you're 19 plus, please play responsibly. Woo! Tyler Bertuzzi is a leaf in a move that I did not see coming but I had hoped would happen. If you watched my breakdown on this channel of the Leafs Day That Was and all the other breakdowns that we did on the STPN YouTube channel, there were 20 plus the one on my channel 21. The recap that I did for the Leafs, I didn't love their day one. With the context of course being, it's just day one. The team on paper heading into next year was worse, like way worse, but again, it's July 1. There's still a lot of work left to do. There are free agents to sign. They have their own players to sign. Uh, Ilya Samsonov is probably going to be the starter. He doesn't even have a contract yet. RFA though. Thank goodness RFA. There's trades that could happen and the unexpected signing. One of the big things that I mentioned with regards to Ryan Reeves and this does factor in I wanted nothing to do with Ryan Reeves being the Leafs' only tough guy. Not even tough guy, the only source of pushback. Because that's probably the thing that the Leafs lost the most on day one. Ryan O'Reilly, Luke Shen, Nolachari, all oh, that broke my heart, Nolachari! And let's not forget Michael Bunting. As far as last year's roster goes, Tyler Bertuzzi directly replaces Michael Bunting. And he's pretty good. And we know this because we're Leaf fans and I hated playing against Tyler Bertuzzi. I hated when my favorite team, the Toronto Maple Leafs, played against Tyler Bertuzzi. Because the Detroit Red Wings, no matter how bad they've been over recent years, have always been a pain in the buttocks and they always played the Toronto Maple Leafs like it was game seven of the Stanley Cup final and you know how the Leafs do in game seven. Poor, they do, they do poorly. Well, in a shocker, Tyler Bertuzzi signs with the Toronto Maple Leafs one year 5.5 million. Now, a number of people have talked about, oh no, he's injury prone. Yeah, one year. So if he gets hurt, yes, that does leave you in a bind in terms of your roster, but there's no long-term risk to the contract structure or the cap. From reporter Chris Johnston, who happens to have a podcast on STPN Sports, Tyler Bertuzzi's Leafs contract features a no movement clause and the maximum signing bonus. Plus, he's eligible to hit the UFA market again next summer when the salary cap takes a big jump. He links to the breakdown on Puckpedia. Here's what it is. The Leafs signed 28-year-old UFA Tyler Bertuzzi to a one-year $5.5 million cap hit deal. Salary, $775,000. Signing bonus, $4.725. Plus the no-move clause. So that's interesting. Here's how I read that. So the vast majority of Tyler Bertuzzi's contract Hand it over to him. He's got it already. Or in a couple days, that it's Canada Day long weekend, the banks, you know, it's weird. But the signing bonus is 85.9% of Tyler Bertuzzi's deal. And you go, oh, if they have to trade him, that makes it really easy on account of you only have to pick up 14.1% of his salary for one year. But he's also got the no move clause. What that all comes down to, I think, is if things were to go extremely south, He'd be able to move, it's just Tyler Bertuzzi gets to choose where he goes. But I don't think that's why this deal was signed. I think this deal was signed and I think all that money up front is because the Toronto Maple Leafs really wanted Tyler Bertuzzi. They need a player like Tyler Bertuzzi. And listen, I know there is going to be a large contingent of Leaf fans that don't like this signing on account of he was the only player in the NHL during that bubble year who chose not to get vaccinated. Listen, I think two things can be true at once. Number one, vaccines save lives. And number two, Tyler Bertuzzi scores goals. It kind of got overshadowed in that the Boston Bruins had a 3-1 series collapse against the Florida Panthers in blue game seven, but Bertuzzi was a monster in that series. He had five goals and five assists for 10 points in seven games. His five goals were tied for the most on the Bruins with Taylor Hall, who they moved for nothing, and David Posternak, and he was tied for the team lead in points with Brad Marchand with 10. There was only one game in that series he didn't have a point in, and that was game five, and he even scored in game seven. His regular season was a little concerning. Uh, he only played in 50 games. He had eight goals, 
30 points. In the season before, he played in 68 games, which is better, but it's still shy of 82. But worth mentioning, in those 68 games, he had 62 points, 30 of them goals. And he's just a jerk. He's an enormous jerk. And there is one game that I remember in particular. I want to say it was that ridiculous 10-7 game where the Leafs, I want to say, blew a 7-2 lead and they required goals 8, 9, and 10 in the third period just to get the job done. But if I remember correctly, Tyler Bertuzzi was out there blocking shots, like agonizingly blocking shots and going down in pain with something like 20 seconds left to block the empty net because he wanted to win that badly no matter how low the chances were. Listen, the Leafs have skill. They have lacked scoring depth for a long time, especially in the playoffs, but they do have skill. What they've lacked for a number of years is that, that, the willingness to do something that the other team isn't. The screw it, I'll do it myself attitude, which is why I am super excited for what Chris Johnston also said from CJ. Even after signing Tyler Bertuzzi, the Leafs are still poking around the free agent market to see what else they can do. I don't believe the door is fully closed on Max Domi at this point. Yes! Yes! Listen, I made it obvious on yesterday's coverage with SCPN Sports. I'm sad about the Leafs losing Nolachari. I would have loved to seen a team that had Nolachari and Ryan Reeves. But here's why I, I keep bringing it back to Ryan Reeves. I said this for a long time with the Boston Bruins. There was Zdeno Chara, right? And then there was his little band of rats. Now they weren't all rats. Some of them were like coyotes and wolves. Like they were big guys. Lucic, he was pretty big, pretty tough. Adam McQuaid, same thing. Sean Thornton, ew. Then there's this little guy, Brad Marchand. And wh where did you come from? And maybe he was always gonna be this feisty type of player, but if he wasn't surrounded by his big old buddies for his whole career, who knows what happens of the rat. Chara was the enabler of that. So much so that that continued for years after with the Boston Bruins. It became a culture. Michael Bunting's job on last year's Toronto Maple Leafs, I think, was impossible. He drove me nuts a number of times last year and he couldn't keep his lid on. But why couldn't he keep his lid on? Think about that. Is he just a loose cannon? Is it because of the refs? It might have something to do with the refs, but I tell you what, he had to do everything. He had to be the heart and soul and give a darn of this team night in and night out. And when Austin Matthews wouldn't stand up for himself, it's Michael Bunting and the league's oldest player in Mark Giordano jumping to his defense. What if the Leafs had the biggest, meanest pair of fists in the entire National Hockey League behind Michael Bunting. And there's always the usual Twitter chirp, oh yeah, Ryan Reeves was really gonna do a lot from the bench. Come on, come on now. We, we all know how this works, come on now. The chirp's funny until he comes off the bench. And listen, Tyler Bertuzzi, I think he'd handle himself. If the Leafs were able to go out and get Max Domi, he can handle himself too. But having Ryan Reeves behind them, is fun. Oh, it's definitely fun. Yeah, it might cost you a goal here or there, but you never know when that sort of situation is gonna come in handy. Players like Tyler Bertuzzi and the skilled guys on the Leafs are gonna need this. Generally, hockey is moving away from that sort of thing, but look at the Atlantic Division. Pay attention. Bruins got Lucic back. The Leafs have Reeves. Sens went out and got Boko Imama. He's on the radar too. The Florida Panthers are... You know, the Lightning still have Big Rig, the Detroit Red Wings got Justin Hall. That was, that was for me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Listen, Bunting was a good player for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Tyler Bertuzzi is that, but has far greater upside. And funny enough, they're only one year apart in age. Bertuzzi was drafted in 2013, Bunting 2014. I could see Bunting creating a huge ruckus in Carolina and having a great time and putting up a bunch of points. Bertuzzi, in all likelihood, is going to play with Matthews and Marner? Probably. Matthews and Nylander? Tyler Bertuzzi with John Tavares and Mitch Marner? Tyler Bertuzzi with John Tavares and William Nylander? And all on a one-year deal while he juices those numbers right up. Ooh, 
just as I'm shooting this video. From Elliot Friedman, I do believe Toronto and Max Domi are working at this too. We will see. Indeed, we will see, Fridge. So you know what? Rather than go through what the entire Leafs roster could look like, I'm gonna leave it because it sounds like they're working on something. Tyler Bertuzzi is a Leaf for one year. What do you think about that? Do, do you like that he's on the team now or do you worry about what's coming later? Let me know in the comment box down below. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Ooh, day two is a little better than one.